This podcast is about you and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. <laughs> yes, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So uh, whereabouts are you in this uh, fantastic world? So I'm in Canterbury in the UK at the moment. Um, bit, so it's like outside of London, countryside vibes. Okay, very cool. Uh, okay, so so you're in, is that the, the home you're born and raised in? Yes, yeah. So I've been here for a long time now. Um, but yeah, it's nice as well because like before, obviously before the pandemic, when I was traveling to LA and um, going up to London all the time for studio and everything like that, um, it's just nice because then I can be back, come back home and I'm back in the countryside and um, yeah, it's just really relaxed and I'm not, you know, always sure. like in the kind of busy areas. Swamped <laughs> up, yeah, in Los Angeles. <laughs> how yeah. did you, yeah, how did you get into music? Um, so I started off doing loads of singing at school. Um, I started like doing piano lessons and guitar because I wanted to just to get the basics. Like I'm not the best mm -hmm. player, but <laughs> um, so yeah, so I started doing a lot of that and then we had band nights. Um, so that was like time for students to be able to get on stage and just perform their songs and things like that. Um, so yes, yeah, so I did that. And then at 16, I was like, right, I actually really want to do this properly now. I really can see myself um, going down this path. So mm -hmm. Ended up moving to Brighton, which is a two hour drive from where I am at the moment. Um, and I ended up going to a college called BIM and like mm -hmm. a music college. Oh, James wow. Bay was there. I don't know if you, yeah, James Bay. Like, yeah. yeah, I know James Bay. Yeah, so like a few, few cool people went there. So, wow. um, yeah, so I did that for like two years. Um, and just, it just really helped build like my confidence and get in and out of open mic nights and performances um and then yeah just kind of after that I just went into LA and then it went from there <laughs> wow, wow wow so you, you said piano lessons and guitar lessons early on how old were you when you started what, which start, instrument did you start first I started piano first when I was 12 um so that was like my first year seven so it was like my first year in senior school mm -hmm. um but yeah, I just wanted to, I just, oh, I think I always wanted to be, a, I've always known I wanted to be a singer, but I think it was the easier way to get into singing was by taking an instrument. Because mm -hmm. then I'd like sing at the same time as playing. And that's how like people were like, right, Mimi, let's get you in the band nights. And it was a lot more easier to just go through that kind of way. So I think I was also a bit nervous to sing. I was like, I can't just walk in and sing. <laughs> I was like, I need to figure out a strategic way in. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Yeah, I think um, piano and then, yeah, guitar, I started that at like 14 for my college because I knew I wanted to do like, I wanted to leave school and go and do music. So mm -hmm. I knew I needed like some sort of like, you know, instrument under my belt. <laughs> right, of course. Well, with um, the vocals, how, when did you realize that you can actually sing really, really well? I'm sure it was before you were 12 and started playing piano. Um. I don't know. I think when I was young, I've always had a really husky voice. And when I was young, I was much more husky and hard, hard, very hard to control. So I think I knew I had the tone and like a lot of people and like my guitar teacher and piano teacher, they were all like, you have the tone, like you need to work at this. But I definitely would say my control was not there <laughs> and the techniques were not, not there. But I just knew there was something to work with. So just spent hours and hours at it, practicing um, vocal lessons just to you know, figure out how I can actually control my voice and get the best out of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, so you went to, you, tell me about this. Was this a class or something in school where they would put you up on stage and, and you get to perform? Was that, how did that all work? It was sort of like a music club sort of thing. Um, mm. So they do it outside of the music lessons, but um, it was quite competitive because there were so many singers at my school and, you know, I kind of, went walked in there I was a newbie and everyone kind of had their thing going for them already so I kind of mixed it up a bit came and I was like I want to sing as well <laughs> so yeah it was like a kind of music club thing where people can join and and get involved <laughs> wow that's cool and you guys would just perform what to your to your group of people or would they put on performances for like the rest of the school and stuff yeah they'd put on like full-on like shows in the evening um 
and so there's a variety show so like you could go up there and do any sort of talent um, mm. so it's like a bit of a yeah a bit of a variety thing but um then there was the band night which was just music and you know bands and all of that and solo artists but um yeah it was just i think cuz i you can do it at any year so i was there from 12 to 16 oh um, okay so, so yeah so there was like every year i could just jump in and it was just like it's just so nice to have those resources. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Were you doing your own original songs at this point or were you just, was it all cover songs? Yeah, a lot of covers. I did do an original one time, but I was, it's very nerve wracking. I think because at that stage I was so like, you know, I was, that was when I was building my confidence. So all those covers, I think is what really got me to like being like, right, let's go to Brighton. Let's go to, you know, college, music college. And then when I went to college, that's definitely when I started to, um, get into like all my songs and performing all my own songs because I did a songwriting course there so oh, yeah very cool what was the like how many were you always writing prior to to going to Brighton were you did you have yeah. songs like when when did you start writing music so I, I'd say I started like 13 um I just always would write things down even when I was like eight like if I got in trouble with my mum and dad, I'd write it down. Like anything emotional I was feeling, mm -hmm. I was like, Dad got annoyed angry with me today. <laughs> oh, mum, mum's upset. <laughs> but yeah, I just always wrote everything down and they kind of turned into like little poems. And then, yeah, when I was like 13, I started, you know, I got into the instruments, figuring out what a melody is. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I'd say 16 when I did, like when I went to Bryson, that's when it really started to like my songwriting was at a stage where I could actually write something, you know, something good, kind of. <laughs> right, right. Well, you said you performed your own original songs in front of, you know, your your peers at these yeah. these these band nights. That must yeah. have been pretty uh, pretty terrifying the first time. It was yeah, really scary. And like you, you there was always like the one guy I liked there as well. Of course. My whole years is like. <laughs> You're just singing and it's like, oh, I don't know. It's just very dramatic. I was very dramatic. Like, I felt like I was in high school musical. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, like pre playing that first song, the original one, was it like after like doing that, obviously it was you got a good response, I'm sure. Um, yes. Uh, so, yeah, it was like, I don't know. I kind of it wasn't like the best song because it was I was so young, but sure. it definitely was like an open book to people being like wow like this is actually something she wants to do mm -hmm. um and it, I took it very seriously and yeah I don't know how I had the confidence to do that to be honest like I look back and I just kind of cringe a little bit <laughs> of course <laughs> wow with with Brighton though did you have to uh like audition to get in that school I'm sure you can't just say oh I want to be a musician so I'm going to go there yeah Yes, I started, I'm sorry, my dog's barking. So oh, it's it's um, totally fine. Uh, that's <laughs> like, the, that's the one thing that I kind of enjoy about these, uh, this whole lockdown situation is we get this behind the curtain look to, to you and in yeah. and, and your home and like, on in yeah, dog barking, who cares? Yeah. I have a dog too. I had to put yeah. him out, out there with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, um, what was your question again, sorry? The Oh, I was the, wondering if you had to do like an audition process to get in Brighton. Oh yeah, I did. So I did a, cause I did, so I did Brit school on weekends. So while I was at my school, I was doing Brit school on weekends. So it's just like a little bit of a, like a, just to get me warming into it all. It was just something you can go and do. You had to audition for, but um, I got into that. So did that for about three years. And then when I was 16, I was ready to go to college. I did the interview process. Um, and yeah, it was just like going in, you had to do a theory test, which I'm not the best at, <laughs> um, a performance. And yeah, they'd give you like a list of five songs to cover. Um, so I did all that. And then I was just so happy to find out I could get in. But then I also had to get my exam results. Like I had to pass everything to get in. Uh -huh. So I was, that was also something I was nervous <laughs> about because I, you find out your results in August and then you oh. go to college in September. So I remember just thinking, oh my gosh, like all summer long, just getting so nervous, like, mm -hmm. oh my God, am I gonna get in? 
What was? Did you get like a letter in the mail that was telling you that, or an email or something? Do you remember getting that email or letter? Yeah. I'm not sure what you got. <laughs> yeah, my when I got my G. So they said they accepted me at the start, and they said we'd love to have you come to the college, but we, you know, you need to get your GCSEs and your exam results and pass it all. So I was like, oh my god, because I've never been the best at school as well. Like I've always struggled with it a little bit. So I was just like, right, here we go. So I just studied like oh crazy amounts like it was my motivation to get me to get my mm -hmm. result so yeah so then august i think it was like the 14th or something we you wake up and then the school sends you your results and then um they send your results as well to you like the place you want to go to um and then yes yeah, so i got like two different emails in and the first one was like you've been accepted to come oh, to huge. i was like oh, i must have got my like results and then i looked at my second email with my whole like results like you know listed and i was like yes i was like crying <laughs> of course of course like was it one of those things where i mean when i went to school i'm much older you got like a letter in your in the mail and it was like oh, okay like you know you see the movies where the family's all around and like did i get in like was it one of the did you like wait on the email or were you like okay i'm gonna open this by myself mm, and see yeah. if you know i get in before i, I tell anyone yeah. no my brother did the same actually he so he actually didn't pass his exams oh. and in the morning he was like he read them before telling any of us and I think oh. it was like 11 a.m and you get them like dead on like half seven mm -hmm. I remember it being like 11 and us all going in but like so what's you know have you got them yet yeah. like we all knew he had them but he just didn't want to tell us he was like <laughs> Yeah, just, no, just didn't get them. And we were like, okay. But I remember when I did it, I went in running into my parents, like, guys, like, like getting all excited. We opened up the second email all together. <laughs> That's awesome. What a cool experience. With uh, the the audition process prior to taking the test, you said you had to do five cover songs. You had to learn all five of them and perform them for for uh, the judges, so to speak, the people yeah. that let you in. What? I think you I think you could do a choice like you could do all five or three or two but like I don't think you could just do one mm -hmm. so I did I did four I didn't do five but I learned all of them just in case they were like oh no like you need to sing a different one because mm -hmm. like I get nervous I look at like x factor and they're like I think you need to get a different song choice right. you should have chose a different song <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah I was like learn them all just in case what were the songs were they like pop hits or you know <laughs> Kind of all over the map. Ella, oh, oh, I think there was an Ella Fitzgerald song. I'm trying to think now, so long ago. Um, what else I did? What was that? Etta, oh yeah, Etta James. I did one with Etta, Etta James one. I love that song. Um, and then there was like a Katy Perry one, Lady Gaga. So there was like a mixture. There was like some old school and then some new. Mm -hmm. um, but I went straight for the old school stuff. But yeah, this was like 60, I'm 20 now. So I'm just like, sure. I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I was just curious if there was like a, yeah. like a standout song <laughs> yeah, or anything really you already good. knew. Maybe you're like, oh, I already know this Katy Perry song. This is going to be easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was quite cool. <laughs> Did you, what, that's interesting that you chose or you catered to like the older songs. Was that just something that you've always been um, into? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I've loved jazz, um, Louis Armstrong. Like I just love mm -hmm. all of that kind of like old soul, um, soulful stuff. Um, Amy Winehouse as well. Cause I loved as well, like obviously her influences came from all that as well. Mm -hmm. So I think she, I think loving Amy Winehouse took me into that world because then I was so intrigued on where she's got her, you know, where she got all her influences from. And then I, you know, <laughs> searched it up, went into it all and then ended up falling in love with it all as well. Um, yeah, I just think I like, like especially my music videos, like um, you know, my next song and everything. Like I really want to bring elements of that old school vibes, that you know, retro stuff, like all of those like feels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, okay. So you finish, you, <laughs> you graduate from Brighton, which was probably a huge moment for you and your family as well. well I, no, I didn't. I actually left early. Oh. Brighton get signed with uh in la <laughs> oh there you go well the, so, so you accomplished more than most people that probably went there you, you you it's like one of those things i'll talk to people that went to berkeley they're like well i went there for like a year and then i you know got signed to a major label so it's like well that's the the end that's what all these people are probably striving to do anyway while you're there yeah. so why why does it yeah. matter if you finish okay yeah, like, so how did that happen 
So I, so I was just in and out writing with, you know, st other students and I, I ended up meeting a drum, like a DJ kind of thing. And um, he had a drum and bass track and he was like, do you, do you want to write over it? And I'll feature you as an artist. You can sing on it as well. And I was like, yeah, great. Cause we put, we were going to put it on Spotify and everything. So I was like, I don't, you know, I, at that point I didn't really know how to put anything on Spotify. So I just thought this is a great in on it. Mm -hmm. Like then I can find out his distribution company, like distribution company, whatever it's called. Like, yeah, <laughs> all yeah, of those no, do it. I could like find out through him. So I was like, right, let's just do it. So I released that um, and then I was 17 at the time. And then my manager, um, he has like a software company. Um, yeah, so he basically had like a software thing where he can find artists like who release music, SoundCloud, Spotify. It kind of like pops up like as a radar sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So he found me through that and then yeah, and then we just, he put me in and out of like proper studio sessions. Like I'd never gone to like a proper, proper studio. So I was in and out of London um, <clears throat> after I'd met him and I was doing that and college at the same time. And I also had a full-time, well, not full-time job, but like I was working like five, six days a week. So mm -hmm. it was like trying to juggle it all. Um, so yeah, so then we managed to get like a few, like a bunch, not too many, like maybe like three songs, like, really strong songs that we felt we could take and you know have labels here you know play it to them and stuff um so yeah and then we went out to LA did the rounds because we thought why not <laughs> I kind of sure. looked back as well because it was like it was such a I was such a development at the time and I'd only had like three songs so it was definitely like a hit or miss sort of thing mm -hmm. um yeah so then we went out no I met my lawyer sorry um my manager met my lawyer and then we were talking and then he was like all the people that like he was talking to all the labels so yeah we went out chucked out there and then um ended up having epic records was like the last meeting of the trip and it, oh it was just amazing like it was such a good meeting a lot of the meetings were kind of like i i think i found i will i think i went to la being like yeah i can do this like i'm so confident mm -hmm. and i think as i went around doing the meetings like i i slowly started to feel a little bit less confident because some of them weren't as good as the others and you know it's just very daunting you're going in like all eyes on you and then you know i was 18 like some of the questions like oh what do you, you know who are you like i didn't really know how to answer that like i still really don't because i don't know if you know who right. you are you sure. know it was just hard, hard questions that i was thinking God, I should have like, like researched, like really got in, like thought about it before. <laughs> so well, that's weird. I'm surprised that I've never heard that. There was like an interview process. Like, okay, hello, we are, you know, X label yeah, and we want to know who you are. You, I thought they would just be like, play a song. Okay, that's a hit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like that for others. But for me, it was like I went and did the meetings. I think as well, they probably because I was from the UK, so um, you know, it wasn't like I only had like three songs. So I think the whole meeting thing was like needed. But um, but it was really cool to go in all these like big buildings. Like I was like starstruck. I was like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so my last meeting with Epic was just so like relaxed. I really felt myself. I was just really chill and we were just like me and my a and r were like giggling a lot just throughout it just i literally just met him and we like you, you know when you can tell someone yeah. gets you like you, you sure. like get your energy and they get what's going on um yeah so it was just a really good meeting and then yeah signed wow. that, is <laughs> that is amazing was one of those songs uh before i go no i wrote that afterwards after signing. Uh, okay okay um, but yeah i wrote that I think that was the summer. I think that was like five months after I signed. I met my best friend, Rory Adams, one of my best friends now. Um, we both met, he's from Australia. He was down, he was in London. And yeah, we just got went in the studio and just had it like, wrote it on the piano, Rack Studios, it was amazing. <laughs> well, the, the three songs prior, did you ever release those? Like, And I'm curious how the manager found you with this like software. Was that all off of that song that you did the top line on for the DJ? Um, yeah, so yeah, it was all from just that song. And I okay. had like, a YouTube channel, like I, I did covers and like tried to do like music videos for them. I was doing everything, like literally, <laughs> like I look back now and just think, oh my God, like he probably looked at that like, what is this girl? <laughs> but, um, he saw something though, obviously. Yeah, he always says, he always he always says like it was my voice and apparently it was a certain part of that I sang that just like was, he was just like sold. 
And like, he always like says that to me. He's like, remember that tiny bit I love? And like, he's like, yeah, no, he's like, go do that. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, he, so his software, so he, him and his brother built a, like an algorithmic, that's a word. Yeah, algorithms yeah. Um, come like business. And it was all about data and looking at all like the statistics of people releasing on Spotify, SoundCloud. And I don't know exactly how, but there was a way he was like navigating what was getting, you know, viewed by agents and mm. other a &Rs. Like there was like a whole like system he had. Um, and he's he's had a lot of success um, or through it. And yeah, I was like one of his little, one of his people he found yeah. on it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. so after, so you signed to Epic Records, which is huge, huge moment. Um, and you, a couple of years later, a little, not even a couple of years, but like months later, you write this song before I go and yeah. how, tell me about this, uh, this viral TikTok moment and how did Charlie D'Amelio like use this song? Was that something you just woke up to and your phone's like going, Brrr, like, yeah. you're like, what is happening? Or yeah. did you, so like, how did that happen? It was actually crazy because I, so I'd been in New York 2019 Christmas time. I was there with my mum and my manager. We were just doing meetings um, and he knew Charlie D'Amelio's manager as well. Mm -hmm. So they were all going for dinner. So we all ended up going for dinner and I met Charlie, but this was right at the start um, of her like TikTok uh, career so yeah that uh, thing kind of blew up real quick for her yeah it went crazy like even when I met her it was like I think it was like a month she was like a month in to using the app but it was like going crazy like so I uh, yeah I just loved meeting her she's just such a sweetheart and um just here it was just really nice to like you know hear the story behind it and at that point I had no clue what TikTok could do for songs of artists and you know how much it could blow things up i just can't I'd, I'd never i've heard i'd heard of it but i'd never like thought about using it and i i just didn't really know too much mm -hmm. so, yeah so she got me into it she actually made my help me make my account and everything on that night wow, and I met her. that's awesome yeah. how cool yeah we were like having dinner and then <laughs> and they were because we were with charlie's family as well they're amazing and we they were like come on me let's just just do a song in the restaurant so i just started singing um I started singing Adele, um, someone like you, I sang that cover. We did a TikTok of that. So I, that was like my first TikTok I posted on my account. And, and then- that's with, And it was with her also? Yeah, with Charlie. Which helps, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like, and then I had like all the flash torch, like all the, everyone had like flash torches on me, like just to get the lighting. <laughs> and then, cause I'd wrote uh, before I go, that's in that summer before. So 2019 summertime. Mm -hmm. I'd had that song, so then I sang before I go, like, like, like no, you know, no. Yeah, just a cappella. Yeah, just a cappella. That's it. Um, oh, you can't talk to that. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, a cappella, and it was, um, it was just crazy because I was like, oh my god, it's gonna, I'm gonna sound terrible. Like, like I'm not prepared. I haven't even warmed my voice up. This is like, how are we gonna do this? Um, so yes, yeah, so then she ended up posting that, and that did like eight million, I think. <laughs> Yeah. I, think, I think it was like 5 million likes like it was crazy and I was like we were just like wow this is nuts um, and that was going to be my first single anyway because that was like my strongest song at that point as well mm -hmm. so um, yeah so we re then we released it and then Charlie just like really backed it up and just was like supporting still and like it was like a good like four months after we released it so it wasn't like straight after mm -hmm. um, but yeah it was just really nice to see wow. how like TikTok reacts to you know yeah the and the power of like an influencer I mean that's that's such a cool story obviously you have to have the song if the song was garbage then people would be like yeah she's dancing to it okay cool and then it would be moving on but obviously you know it's a hit and now people are searching it out I'm sure your Spotify was like Brr, you know uh, it was crazy I think the nice thing was there was like a whole like story behind it as well and like a mm -hmm. relationship there already kind of thing like um we just were having i feel like it was nice because when i'd met charlie we were just having fun like we were literally just having fun on the app and we thought you know what let's sing and i remember there were so many people around us i thought oh my god shall i just do it for the jokes like let's just do it yolo <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so then the next song that you put out um i'll break my heart again was that put out like tell me where you were when like COVID hit and you know everyone's got locked inside 
because I'm sure that was probably pretty close to the same time that you put out uh, yeah. even even the first one, right? Before I go. You yeah, said, so you said Christmas time night 2019. Yeah, yeah. So we recorded the music video January 2020. Um, so just before like the whole pandemic. So it was all done. So I was happy because I was like, it's all good. Like we'll just release it whenever mm -hmm. we you know. So then April we released Before I Go. And then after the pandemic, we released like summertime when things were opening up, we released I'll Break My Heart Again. Um, but I'll Break My Heart Again was actually written just before pandemic as well because I did a writing camp. Um so yeah, I did that just before it all shut down. So we managed oh. to get that one. Quickly yeah. grab that one. <laughs> so that was done and was it recorded and everything prior to shutting down? Yeah, yeah. All rec I recorded it. I wrote it, the we wrote it in the studio and then the next day I went and recorded it properly. So yeah, it was just right when like everything was just about to shut. <laughs> wow. And how is that? I mean, that must have affected you pretty, you know, you're like, okay, I, you got this. I got this momentum going. I have, you know, this one song with that's like doing really well and I'm just about to put out this next song and now what, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was cause, cause I remember like, <clears throat> it was all kind of like blowing up like with before I go and I just thought to myself, what do I do? Like I'm stuck at home. I can't go out. What content do people want to see from me? What, what, you know, <laughs> what, um, <clears throat> I was just getting into zoom, writing songs over zoom. I just, it was all up in the air, but then I realized I really needed that lockdown. Like personally for me, like I just needed to, like, I feel like I went in and came out a completely different person. Um, and that was nice as well, just cause when everything was blowing up with before I go, I was at home. I wasn't too exposed. I wasn't out doing loads of things, you know, and, I was just with my family and I was just really just focusing on what I needed to get done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it wasn't too bad, but yeah, there was definitely times I was just thinking, can we do some shows now? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> right. Even if I had like one song out, I was like, no, we can still do it. <laughs> right, of course. Well, well um, since the lockdown happened, were you able to, you said you needed it to kind of like decompress. Were you writing? Have you been writing like the entire time? Like how were you yeah. able to? Yeah, lots. And every day I've been on Zoom and I actually love it. I think it's so nice to just be in your own space um, and connect. Like I write with loads of people in LA now. I do evening sessions so that, you know, time zones work out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just so easy to, you know, sit in my room, write and then just vocal by myself as well, because like I've always vocal with other people in the room and stuff. Now I vocal my own vocals at home and it's just... Yeah, it's just good to have that like private time to really connect with the song, I guess. Right. Do you feel like because you're by yourself and you can kind of, you probably don't have that, um, you're not as like, you know, it's not as, uh, what's the word I'm thinking for? Like vulnerable because you're not around like all these big, you know, producers that are going to be like, okay, go, your turn. Or, you know, go hit, hit the note. Like, yeah. do you feel like you have more time to like really try new things or, or, or experiment more? Yes, definitely. It's it's nice as well because I can spend time like comping my own vocals and um, <clears throat> yeah, just like doing my own thing. Cause I guess when you're in like the big booth and you know, everyone's around, like everyone does want to like have a go of their ideas and maybe sing the melody a little bit more soft and hard and just things like that. Um, but when I'm in my own like room and I'm doing it, I can just like, I just feel no pressure. Like if I get it wrong, I don't get scared that, you know, cause right, I think when just I do it again. Yeah. Cause it's weird. Cause I feel like when I'm in the studio, I do mess up sometimes like when I'm like, in the booth because I overthink, but when I'm at home, I just realize that I never overthink and I don't get any takes wrong. Like it just comes out really naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully when I then get back in the studio, that will rub off what I've been building up in my room and rub off in the booth. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Yeah, just gaining that own, your own self-confidence there because instead of being in there and letting, like trying to listen to everybody else's opinions and then you're trying to probably yeah. like, okay, like, if I keep screwing this up, I'm wasting all these people's time. Like I can imagine that being something that's running through your mind at one point or another, like. hundred percent, yeah. And then like, and then you just think to yourself, oh my God, like, what are they going to walk out the room thinking like that? That's like one of the main things. Um, I'm just, I always think so I get the train home because I obviously live outside London. It's like an hour train. 
And the whole way to home, I'm just like, oh my God, why didn't you get that right? And I'm like re singing it again and again. Yeah, you're just <laughs> overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I get it right in the end, which is all right, I guess. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that is all that matters. Uh, well, tell me about reasons. That's a new one. That's a new one that you just just released. How is how or not just released, but released uh recently, yeah. About a month ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's been amazing as well. I've really gone big on TikTok for this one. Um I think with before I go, the sound went crazy because there was so many, you know, Charlie was doing all the videos to it and people were like following on from her with that. But this time I've taken like full control of this song and I've done so many TikToks with my dad, my mom, just getting those really emotional raw moments and mm -hmm. people felt so connected to them. And I just thought, I remember posting them. I thought, oh my God, I'm really, I'm like going out. I'm really putting myself out there. But um, I just realized that, you know, people, I think people like that and they and they can connect to it. Um, and I, I honestly didn't know how it would go down because I thought, you know, people can take this one way or another. But yeah. it was just really, I was really grateful for everyone to, you know, take the realness out of it, which was just that emotional engagement. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's cool. So you're, that's, I'm sure that your fans and you have this, this new fan base of people through her, you know, in the beginning, but they probably like, obviously they're connecting with you because just because she does a song with somebody, it doesn't mean really anything. Other. Like we were talking earlier, I said, like, if it was in a good song, like no one would have cared. But, and then oh, the yeah. fact but that they're following you and they're continuing to engage with you, obviously, you know, it's, it's something that you're connecting to. And I'm, I'm sure the fact that you bring your mom and your dad into it, like the other people are like, oh, like, then, you know, this is so cool that, you know, you're, you're including your whole family and in, in everything else. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like I think for them as well, like they're really putting themselves out there for it as well. But like it, it really shows that you can be an artist, you can be an independent artist, and all you got to do is get on that app and just put a video out there. And yeah, it is gonna. You are putting yourself out there. It is a bit extra, maybe, but mm -hmm. you know, you just got to do it. You know, for your song and and connect with people because I think, you know, I I've sometimes been in positions where I'm in public and, you know you I don't know you don't really talk to people I get a bit shy sometimes and then I realized that TikTok is a you're able to really like be yourself to, in front of people and it's a way that people can actually connect that are strangers which doesn't actually happen a lot say you're sitting on a bus you know <laughs> sure sure um well this song obviously was done after the lockdown happened how is that recording process with uh, all the restrictions and everything so that was actually all right because um, we figured a way that we can do it through Zoom. Um, my vocal producer, Connor in LA, he, so what we do is we go on Zoom and then I share my screen with him and then he can take control of my laptop, my, you know, my like mm -hmm. control. So then all I have to do is sit with my mic, sing my takes, and then he will just like, uh, like do it all for me. Oh, he me. can produce it while you're, yeah. wow. Yeah. And we use a thing called audio movers that um, like, you know, you can connect the sound and it's not delayed. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's been really fun to be honest. Like I've been doing vocals till like four in the morning. And if I was in the studio, I'd get really tired, I think. But like when I'm at home and I'm vocaling, I'm just like, it's all good because I can just hop straight in bed after. <laughs> yeah, you're like, my bed is right here. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> when it's like, right, Mimi, I'm just going to quickly take like five minutes just to sort through some stuff. I'll be like, okay, all well, cool. And I'll just walk over to my room, my bed, and just have a little lay down, a little trash little out for five light. minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That is cool. So, do you, what's, what's going on now? Like, you, you know, you released Reasons about a month ago, and then uh, do you have other songs that you've produced and you have ready since you know the recording of that song yes yeah i've got my next single um so we recorded that last year um so that's next um and then i wrote a song just like the start of this year i wrote a song that is going to be the single after that so Very yeah cool. so i'm excited for all of it to to get to come out <laughs> mm -hmm. and you said there's a video for the the next single too and yeah. how was that another like process of shooting the video or was that, you know, obviously with uh, the restrictions again, like how did, how are you able to- We to... haven't shot the video yet. So oh, I thought you said that you had the video, okay. 
Yeah, no, we're not yet. But we've got we've got like the whole idea and stuff. Um, but we're just yeah, we're waiting to get that done. So that's the whole that's the kind of hold up, depending on when we when we can release it and everything. But this video is definitely going to be like very big, the biggest video I've done um, so far. So yeah, just hopefully it will all start opening up. I mean, here schools are opening up now, so that's it's looking good. good. Hopefully for the future. <laughs> for the next cool. Month. Yeah, well, I can't wait. I can't wait to to see it. I can't wait to hear the new song. And thank you so much, Mimi, for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun. <laughs> I have one more question for you before I let you go. I want to yeah. know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh, um, yes, I would say go to as many open mic nights as you can, perform as much as you can, get yourself seen. Um write as much music as you can um, and just be open with yourself because I think the only way you're going to connect and people are going to connect with you if, is if you're honest with yourself and you open up about your emotions and you're ready for any situation in your life to happen, to write it about it and yeah, put it out there. <laughs> Chuck yourself out there. Be extra if you need. <laughs> Bring me the best